Hi guys, Nexi here, back with another video and today we're gonna unbox, test and review this awesome laser engraver. This thing can engrave wood, plastic, leather, ceramic and even the stainless steel. So stay tuned! Welcome back guys and thanks for tuning in. This is the Atomstock X7 Pro, the latest laser engraver from Atomstock. This laser engraver has the new M50 laser module, which has a 2 5 watt laser diode combined with one laser beam with a total 10 watt laser output. With this high output, this laser engraver can engrave even stainless steel, and with a double compressed beam, the laser spot is just 0.06 mm, so that you can have extremely precise results when cutting or engraving. The M50 laser module has a fixed laser beam, so no focusing are necessary. And it takes just 10 seconds to adjust the height for the module and you're ready to go. Engrave area is 410 mm by 400 mm, which is already quite large. But if you want to make this laser engraver even more larger, you can simply replace these two frame sides with a longer aluminum extrusions and get even bigger engrave area. In terms of design and build quality, this laser engraver has a very simple and nice design. The frame and all components are made of metal parts and the build quality of the components are great. The movements of this laser module are done with a two-step motors, one for x-axis, which moves laser module left and right, and one step motor for y-axis, which moves the whole platform back and forward. The good thing about y-axis is that the both sides are connected with a steel rod, which keeps both sides synchronized and with the bearing wheels and a good reinforced rubber belts, the whole movement are nice and smooth. This machine uses 32-bit motherboard, nicely packed and protected inside the metal case, on which there is a touch LCD screen, which is detachable and it holds on the magnet, which is a nice feature. This laser engraver can work both online and offline. For online engraving, it uses the USB port and USB cable to communicate with a computer. And for the offline engraving, it uses the microSD card to read the G-codes and with the touchscreen interface, you can engrave and work even offline without computer, which is very useful. In terms of hardware controls, there is a large killer switch, power on-off switch and the reset button. And when it comes to the safety features, this laser engraver has a built-in gyroscope, which will stop the process and turn off the laser if the machine are tilted more than 20 degrees. On the laser module, there is also a safety filter glass, which will protect your eyes so no safety glasses are necessary, which is a very nice. In terms of unboxing and assembly, the whole process was easy and simple and very beginner friendly. Every component was well packed and secured with a lot of foam and the instructions are simply to follow. Basically first you need to assemble the bottom frame, which contains all the four pieces of aluminum extrusions. Each corner holds with the two screws and both screw bags are clearly marked. The logo goes on the back side up, and the extrusions with the printed measurements goes on the left side. Now after screw down all four sides of the frame, the next step is to slide the upper frame or the x-axis on the bottom frame or y-axis. Basically just place the upper frame on the spot and drag it towards you with the both hands. Next step is installing the legs or support gasket and the control box. The control box goes on the left front side and the legs goes on each corner each holding with the two M5 screws marked in a bag number 2. Next step are the belt installation, but before that I took a small wrench and adjust the bearing wheels on the x-axis until the movement was nice and smooth without any play or too much resistance. The y-axis was good and it need no adjusting, as it was moving very smooth without any play. Next step was belt installation, so I placed the belt inside of the extrusion and I screwed down T-nut with Allen key and then I place the belt under the first bearing wheel, and then over the pulley, and under the wheel to the front. Then I pull the belt slightly with one hand, and tie the screw. I check the tightness of the belt, and then I cut the excess piece of the belt. I leave a tiny bit of the belt, just in case it need adjusting in the future. And I place the end cap cover. Then I repeat the process on other side, and I start with the wires connecting. I free the cables from the control box, and first I plug in the stop switch and then Y-step motor. 
Next, I plug in the X-Stop switch and then X-Step motor. Then I took the laser module, I slide it in a place, tie down the adjusting knob and I plug in the laser module. Next stop was the zip ties and I place each zip tie on every component to make sure that the cables and connectors are free from cable jack. Then I took the LCD and I connect it with a motherboard with a supply HDMI cable. Next stop, I took a power cable and a USB cable and I plug in in the control box. I use the zip ties to secure a cable on the side of the frame and I place the metal pad that was also in a box. At this point, assembly was complete. I would say that it took me around 15 to 20 minutes from unboxing to a finished assembly. And now, let's quick talk about the software before we go to the engraving quality and the cutting performance. This laser engraver used a free open source software called the Laser GRBL, which I found to be very easy and simple to use. Installing of this software takes just a minute and user interface are well laid out, light and easy to use. In my case, the PC recognized the engraver straight up and it was no need to install any drivers or anything. So it was just basically plug and play. But in every case, on a microSD card that comes in a box, you have instructions how to install the software, drivers, how to use it, how to set up the laser level and etc, which is very useful. For instance, you have examples of what parameters like speed and power you should use with the different materials, with the image examples. That was very useful and I found that these profiles work very well. In terms of engraving quality and cutting performance, they are very good. And like any other new skill or hobby, you need some time to learn and try out what settings works best for each different material. I have tried out this laser engraver on quite a few different materials and I play with the different settings to see what results I will get. At first, I start with the samples from the microSD card, on a white A4 paper. And from the first try, I got a great result. I found this image sample to look very cool, so I took a piece of the cardboard and I graved the same sample. It was so cool to watch the engraving process and how fast this laser engraver moves and it needs only 30% of the power with the speed to engrave this sample into the cardboard. The results was pretty nice and I also try out the tiger sample which turned out great as well. Next I want to try out to engrave real image so I took the screenshot from one of my videos and I grave it in the same piece of cardboard just on the other side. Since the software automatically converts image to the grayscale you can pretty much use any photo or image and this laser engraver can engrave it. Next I took a few pieces of the white laminated plywood that I had laying around and I tried to engrave some samples and images. I found very quickly that laminated white plywood was not really the best material for a laser engraver but thanks to the high power output it was plenty of power to get a deep contrast. I tried out first 50% power and the engravings had pretty poor contrast at this high speed so I eventually crank out the power to 100% and I got very nice deep engraving and high contrast. These horizontal lines that I had with some high quality images I fixed later in the settings by changing laser per step from 8mm to 10mm. Here you can see the difference in engraving quality between 50% power and 8 lines per millimeter and 100% power and 10 lines per millimeter you get a much deeper contrast and better resolution. And if you're looking for even more resolution or even higher quality deeper engraving, you can set the laser to do two passes, one in horizontal and one in a vertical pass, for example. That will give you even better results with a white laminated plywood, but on the MDF sheets or normal plywood, even 40% power and one pass is more than enough for a deep contrast. Next I try out some cutting, so I took a 3mm MDF sheets and I cut out some sample parts for a valentine flip box and the laser cut it in a 3 pass very clean. So I took a new sample and I cut out pieces for a tiny Christmas house which also was cut out very nice and clean. Then I cut out sample for this nice design hinge box. Then I did a few more cuttings like this small airplane a kid's puzzle 
and more. And everything turned out great. Also to keep in mind that during deep engraving or cutting process, there is a lot of smoke that gets released in the air, so I do recommend that you use this machine only in a well-ventilated area. For example, I have placed this powerful ventilation fan, which blows huge amount of air outside of this test room. But in the future, I will for sure make some kind of enclosure for this laser engraver with a built-in ventilation. Next, I try on to engrave ceramic and stainless steel, and to my huge surprise, this laser engraver performs awesome with both ceramic and stainless steel engraving. Not only did the laser have power to engrave such a hard materials, it did with such a high precision and detail, which is amazing. And I particularly like how good the engraving was on the stainless steel. So I engraved this huge lotus mandala on the bottom of this stainless steel plate. This engraving took 10 hours to finish and the effect and the quality is fantastic. I love it. And now, the final words. Well guys, I think the Atom Stack did great job with this laser engraver. I like the quality performance and the simplicity of this machine. With the dual laser diodes and combined 10 watt laser output, gives you opportunity to cut and engrave your project much faster and I was really impressed with the ability to engrave ceramic and even stainless steel. I think this is a really good laser engraver and I was able to engrave and cut many cool things in a different kinds of materials without too much of the effort. Online you can find tons of free projects, images, logos and anything you can imagine. Or you can make your own drawings or use your own images and engrave them in all kinds of materials. If you create a person, the list is endless what you can do with this laser engraver. And in this price point, I really don't have any complaints about it. I think this is an awesome tool, which you can make tons of cool and useful stuff, or who knows, maybe even start a small business. Alright guys, I hope that you liked this video and found it useful, and if you want to get this laser engraver, check the links in the video description. I wanna thank you for watching, and I see you next time. Bye bye.